Hey guys, well, for those of you who've been following me for a while, uh, this is probably a familiar sight. Uh, I can remember a couple of years ago back when my original Precision Matthews was sitting right in the same spot. Today I'm out in the garage and I'm going to start tear down Chad's meal here. Uh, he had already started to assemble it for the CNC conversion, but I want to break it all back down because we're going to be doing linear rails. Let me get this tore down and uh, we'll move forward. Alright, well I finished disassembling the Precision Matthews and it's ready for XL conversion. Now in the last video I talked about linear guideway selection and things to consider such as the size, type, and accuracy. The size of the Precision Matthews is quite a bit bigger than the G0704 but not quite the mass of a 45 series mill. Now I know a few people who have done linear rail conversions on their G0704 Z axis and they've used the Hiwan EG series rails and blocks with real success. The EG series dynamic load ratings however for 15 millimeter rails is only 5.35 kilonewtons or 1202 pounds. Now, while I think this is sufficient for the 704, I wasn't too sure I'd be comfortable with those load ratings on the Precision Matthews. So I decided to look at the HG and RG series, both of which have dynamic load ratings for the 15 millimeter rails of 11.3 kilonewtons or 2,540 pounds, which is twice that of the EG series. It should be more than enough for the X and Y axis on the Precision Matthews. Now, on the Z-axis, I will use, however, 20 millimeter rails. The dynamic load rating for the HG series 20 millimeter rails are 17.75 kilonewtons or 3,990 pounds and 21.3 kilonewtons or 4,888 pounds for the RG series. The 20 millimeter rails on the Z-axis will help with the 150 pound head assembly Remember, I've got that big motor I'm going to put on there, which is about 50 pounds, twice that of the Leeson that I have on the current mill. And also, you have the cutting force that's going to be applied to the tool. So I felt like the 20 millimeter rails would serve better on the Z-axis. Today, I have a couple of examples of high wind linear guideways, uh, both of which we looked at in the last video. The HG series, which is the heavy ball type and the RG series which is the roller type both of which I feel will work well for the Precision Matthews in terms of load rating and rigidity so now let's go into the shop and we'll take a look at these alright it's a little bit cooler here in the shop I've had the AC running so it's good to get out of that hot garage uh, so here we have a couple of examples uh, the RG series here and the HG series linear guideways and blocks. There are some advantages to both, but for these size meals, I think you can't go wrong with either one, really. Now, the HG series, I think, is a little more forgiving. Uh, it has self-aligning capability that can better absorb installation errors. They're interchangeable, so you can put any block on any rail and still maintain dimensional tolerances. They offer high rigidity in all four directions, up and down and left and right. This makes it great for CNC milling machines, routers, and plasma tables. Now, I suggest normal accuracy rails, which is denote, uh, denoted by the C in the model number. So this is an HGR15C. Uh, medium preload on the block. Now, the medium preload is denoted by the ZA in the model number. It's not showing on here, but it's a ZA. Let me see. I'll see if I can put a pop-up of that model number on the video here. Now, the RG series offers higher load ratings and rigidity. We talked about this in the last video. However, they're less forgiving and have tighter tolerances uh, for installation. The optimal design of the circulation path allows the RG series to offer smoother linear motion and the rollers to allow higher load ratings. 
the load is distributed linearly which extends the service life. Now the service life of the RG series is about twice that of the HG series. Now don't get me wrong, I don't think that you'll ever wear out a set of HG series, uh, especially on a hobby meal like this. I figured it out, I think it was like 30 miles of motion, uh, and this is about 60. I really don't think I'll ever wear these out. Hopefully you can see this on the video, but the RG series is a little bit taller than the HG series. These are both 15 millimeter rails. However, this just looks a little bit bigger, uh, mainly because of the way it's cut, and also it is about one and a half millimeters taller. Uh, I'll see if I can get a end profile view here. I don't think I can on camera here. Oh, maybe I can. Okay lights playing tricks with it but you can kind of see the difference there in the shape it's a little bit different uh, the reason being is the RG series it rides on this particular chamfer here and this one right here what the rollers are forced this way and this way so it's like a X or an X shape design there. The rollers are, are in there like that. And they're pushing this way and pushing this way to keep the load. Um, to give it, And this gives it extra rigidity on the and higher load ratings. The HG series, these balls are running on this edge and this edge. So it's a little different. They're not riding at the bottom at all. Uh, let's see. We'll get into this more when I do the install, but you can see the model number here. They'll be uh, laser etched in there. And you can also see an arrow. This arrow points to this side here, indicating this is the reference edge or the master side. Likewise, on your blocks, you'll have a side here that's not finished, and then a side that is machined. That is your reference edge for your blocks. There's some numbers on here. I'm not sure what those numbers denote. Uh, this is a flange type block. Now, on my particular build, I'm going to be using flange type and square type blocks uh, here's the RG series block and you can see we have the reference edged here and on this side there is not this is a RGH 15 CAH and the rail on is the same it's etched the knockoffs won't have this etching in here this is a RGR 15H not sure what this 1609 WR1000 is. In terms of accuracy, the term accuracy is sort of a generic term when it comes to linear rails. Don't be confused with your rail accuracy and machine accuracy. Those are two different things. There are several things that come into play when you're talking about rail accuracy. If you have more than one block on a rail, you have to make sure that each block, the height is within tolerance. Also, from left to right is within tolerance. As well as making sure the two rails are parallel and the height of the rail is within tolerance. Of course, the parallelism is based upon rail length, this particular tolerance for the 460 millimeter rails parallelism is seven micro 17 micrometers which is 0 0.0066 a little over six tenths for the RG series it's 12 micrometers or 0 0.0047 tenths so you can see that you're gonna have to have a lot 
higher tolerance for the install on the RG series. Now, if you recall in the last video, we talked about the 700 millimeter length, and they were within a thousandth of parallelism on the HG series, and the RG series, I believe, was around seven tenths, something like that. As I said before, the HG series rails, I'm using normal accuracy class, and you can see that these all of these variables have to be within tolerance and that has to do with the height of the rail and left to right and of course the parallelism which I just uh, talked about and that you have to look that up on the chart all of these things will come into play when we're talking about rail accuracy so just bear that in mind this is all in the high one installation guide and I pulled all of these charts from that guide, so check that out. I don't want to confuse that with travel accuracy. Uh, the, linear accuracy the linear guide accuracy plays a big part in your travel accuracy and the behavior of the block as it's traveling along the rail. And you can kind of understand that if you have these uh, rails sort of like this, as the blocks go down it's going to do this so that's kind of exaggerated but hopefully you'll get the point uh, you want to make sure that these are as parallel as possible when you do the install and as I said before the RG series require a little bit tighter tolerances than the HG series I don't think I would ever put the RG series on say a plasma table or a CNC router I just don't think um, Especially when you get into the bigger tables, I would stick with the HG series rails. I think you'll just get better results. I'll see if I can get a picture of this. This is the HG series with the balls. You can kind of see a ball maybe down in there. You can see that in there, but you can kind of see the balls down in there. Let me see if I can slide this on the rail. Trying to keep all the dust and debris out of here. Keep this as clean as possible. They're pretty easy. Let me make sure that I got this turned the right way. So our reference edge is this side, and this is our reference edge on the block, so I had it correct. And then this little keeper piece just comes right out. How does that feel? Um, feels pretty good. Feels pretty smooth. I can I don't feel any play. Feels kind of tight, which is nice. These are medium preload blocks, remember that. And then the RG series, you can see the RG series, the keeper is quite a bit different because it's a completely different uh, animal here however uh, you can see it looks like balls in there but these are actual rollers going across there let's put that on so this is the reference edge here you can see it and make sure we get it in the right spot just slid on here. Kind of has a wiper on there, so it's kind of hard to get it started there. And then, as I push it out, or roll it on, I should say, it pops out. There we go. Uh, very stiff on there um, yeah it'd be a very very difficult for you to uh, distinguish any kind of play in any direction on really either one of these they're so tight 
Um, both of these are 15 millimeter rails, 15 millimeter blocks. You can see that the RG series are just a little bit bigger for the blocks, even though they're the same size, and the rails are a little bit uh, bigger as well. Feels very nice. This one feels a lot, a little bit freer as far as rolling. Uh, which is to be expected. This is more for a heavy load. Uh, it's more rigid, so it's going to be a little bit harder to move back and forth over the HG series, I think. But yeah, there you have it. You can kind of see how they go on there. So on the HG series, we're riding on this surface here. The balls roll on this surface and this surface. And then on the RG series, we're actually riding on this surface here and this surface. Earlier we talked about travel accuracy in terms of rail alignment, parallelism, height, variance. Those, all those variables come into play when you're talking about rail accuracy. Also, in terms of rail accuracy, we have pitch, which is the movement of the block this way, roll, and yaw, which is twisting. All three of those will play a factor in your travel accuracy. However, I think the more blocks you have on a rail, the little bit more forgiving it's going to be. Kind of makes sense if you only have one block on a rail and something mounted to it, you're going to have a greater risk for pitch roll and yaw. However, if you have four of these and a plate mounted on here, it's a little bit less chance that you're going to have that great of a pitch rolling y'all. However, there are uh, forces each block can withstand. The RG block being more rigid has a greater factor than the HG series. A lot of times this plays a part in going with the bigger size rails more so than load ratings just to try to achieve uh, more rigidity. Alright, well I guess that wraps up this video. I know you guys are anxious to see how I'm going to go about uh, installing these linear rails on the Precision Matthews. We'll talk about that in the next video. I'll throw up a Fusion 360 model. There are several different methods that Highwind recommends for installation. We'll talk about some of those in that video. If you're interested in Highwind Linear Rails and Blocks, stop by Motion Constrained. They're a Colorado-based company here in the U.S. They carry custom cut-to-length linear rails and blocks. And best of all, they offer free shipping. If there is any questions or suggestions, or maybe I left something out that was important and you feel like it should be added into the video, please post a uh, comment. Thanks for watching, guys. Please subscribe to the YouTube channel. Thumbs up if you like the video. And most importantly, be safe.